good evening doctors and good evening online viewers our today's topic is insulin our today's topic is insulin so firstly we have to know what is insulin and from where is it produced insulin secreted in pancreas 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 from beta cells beta cells responsible for producing insulin a million there is a num- million in number of insulin yeah a beta cell produce insulin by pancreas so when we are going to use insulin in case of type 1 diabetes mellitus my dear friends i am going to explain you type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes gdm gestational diabetes mellitus and diabetic complications in my next coming videos today i am going to explain you about insulin and their uses and i already work in endocrinology department with the dm endocrinologist so this endocrinology topic is my so strong so my dear friends i try my best to explain everything and share my experience with you okay in case of type 1 diabetes mellitus we are going to use insulin but in case of type 2 diabetes mellitus also we can use insulin but when when hba1c hba1c glycosylated hemoglobin is more than 9% when in this one hba1c glycosylated hemoglobin is more than 9% then we are going to use insulin or my dear friends we are going to use insulin in case of failure failure of anti hyperglycemic agent hyper glycemic agents example we know metformin glimepride glycoside sulfonylurea and our new drugs like sitagliptin sexagliptin vildagliptin and so many others my dear friends and doctors listen carefully if there is some complication cx i am writing complication if patient suffer from type 2 diabetes mellitus and he is going to suffer from complications so many like mi post mi and during mi with diabetes we need to give insulin insulin and uh, if patient suffering from neuropathy retinopathy at that time also we need to give insulin why is there anybody think why we need to give insulin why not uh, drugs in in case of gdm gestational diabetes mellitus we need to give insulin why because insulin helps in recovery it helps in recovery fast if we going in operation theater we need to use insulin that time so my dear friends i hope till here you understand what are the uses of insulin now different type of insulin i am going to explain what kind of insulins and uh, their doses how to calculate and when we need to give i hope till here it's clear for you all and if you have any questions you can ask me or you can write your comments behind my video below my video okay so how many types insulin i am going to write you first is rapid insulin rapid rapid insulin rapid or ultra rapid include as part we are using in our practice this insulin as part insulin as part we can say insulin glue lysine glue lysine and insulin lispro so my dear friends please try to understand this rapid insulin we can give in the manner of bolus bolus insulin bolus like bolus b o l u s bolus means before before means earlier earlier than breakfast 15 minutes 15 minute before breakfast before lunch and before dinner 
we need to give earlier 15 minutes earlier this insulin and these three are very effective very helpful my dear friends we can give three times a day in case of type 1 diabetes mellitus we need to give four times insulin three times this bolus before breakfast before lunch before dinner and then patient survival rate increases in case of type 1 diabetes mellitus and night time we are going to give a long acting i am going to explain so don't i am not going to be in a hurry so please understand till here rapid insulin it works till 6 hours 6 hours work it works in our body 6 hours and peak reaches nearly 3 hours 3 hours its peak maximum onset of action that's why before breakfast, before lunch and before dinner. So, uh, I hope till here it's clear. In type 1 and in some complication, we are going to use this insulin. We are really using and very good result. And we have to adjust the doses of these insulins. Uh, we need to adjust the doses and these rapid acting dose, I am going to tell you, we can use criteria 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 unit uh, per kilogram body weight means into kilogram body weight like if a patient weight is 80 kg so we are going to divide it by this one 80 kg so into 80 into 0 0.1 so 0 0.1 we can use this units also so my dear friends i hope till here it's clear for you so see here and it's a really a good one task so like 80 80 into 0 0.1 so what is the value it's eight units we can give eight unit or if we multiply by 0 0.3 80 into 0 0.3 1624 so 24 units we can give in a 24 are my dear friends okay so we have to divide all these three doses if 24 so divided by 3 24 divided by 3 so uh, equals to 3 1 3 3 8 yeah. 24 so 8 unit before breakfast 8 unit before lunch 8 unit before dinner if we divided by 0 0.3 and if by this so we have to adjust 3 unit 3 unit then 2 unit before dinner but my dear friends these are the books criteria how books are saying so but in real life we need to use the formula of titration i hope this is not required for you if someone requires i will put lecture differently okay uh, but uh, till here according to the books it's enough for you to understand to understand because in our practice we are using our experience sometime because sometimes we need to give low doses because this patient goes in high pose if he is uh, following the diet and exercise these are the new guidelines firstly you have to know the proper diet of diabetic diet and proper exercise okay my dear friends for rapid insulin i hope it's clear then coming to the next one rapid insulin <laughs> it's over I hope you are not going to forward, but need a very good practice. Need a very good practice. If you are going to practice, you have your personal OPD, you have to watch always hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia and DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis. In case of type 1 diabetes, I am going to explain in another videos, in my further coming videos, and HSS, hypoosmolar hyperglycemic state in type 2 diabetes mellitus that is most common. In lactic acidosis, I am going to explain everything, everything. So, don't be in a hurry. Firstly, you have to clear your concepts and basics. Okay, now another, like short-acting insulin. I am going to write with a green marker, short-acting. Short-acting. Short-acting includes the regular insulin. Regular like human regular insulin these are the they are working till 12 hours it worked till 12 hours no 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 sorry 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 it is also working uh, nearly six regular regular one regular one same onset uh, we are also using regular insulin in sliding scale sliding scale uh, nowadays this scale is banned 
I don't think so you are going to receive any question by this but in hospital some hospitals uh, those who are not updated yet now they are using sliding scale so I'm going to explain what does it mean by sliding scale till 150 no need to give any insulin in a hospital till 150 no need to give then 150 till 200 we need to give insulin two units regular insulin two units okay understand I hope then 200 1 till 250 we have to give four units then 251 till 300 we need to give six units but I am not using this sliding scale in my general practice and in our hospital we are not following this sliding scale because so many cases like hypoglycemia we suck that's why we are just titrating a dose and injecting a patient okay and till 301 till 350 we need to give 8 units then 351 till 400 blood sugar we need to give 10 units more than 401 we need to give 12 units so uh, I hope you understand about regular insulin by sliding scale less than 150 no need to give no insulin no insulin if patient in a hypo we need to uh, give in hospital practice 25 percent dextrose 100 ml that time if he is in a severe hypo i am going to explain everything, everything. so i hope till here it's clear okay the next one we can use intermediate also intermediate like uh, human insulin human insulin uh, name like uh, preparation 70 by 30 50 by 50 preparation and uh, 75 by 25 preparation these these insulin work till 12 hours intermediate work 12 hours so peak reaches at the 6 hour peak at 6 hour my dear friends we can use this intermediate you uh, in our practice uh, like two times before morning breakfast and up before dinner okay intermediate two times a day and in case of intermediate how we are going to calculate the doses two times we have to took 0.5 into body weight so we are going to took like i think uh, body weight is 100 okay let's took 100 here the body weight i'm going to tell you in morning dose I'll, before breakfast before breakfast I hope it's clear 2 by 3rd dose we need to give and before dinner uh, dinner we need to give 1 third dose of insulin so 0 0.5 weight is 100 ok I am going to rub this and then it's more easier for you to understand so so dear doctors I hope this lecture will help you because I am giving my whole experience in this lecture I have a very great practice about uh, using uh, insulin okay now before breakfast intermediate insulin uh, we need to took two by third before breakfast marker is bad bad working another i'm going to use then before dinner this one is a good marker before dinner uh, we need to use one third dose of insulin so if we are going to multiply by 0 0.5 unit of insulin into body weight body weight is 100 100 then it came into how much units uh, 5 into 100 5 into 100 it's 50 units 50 i hope yeah 50 units yes 0.1 came here yeah 50 units we need to give but before breakfast how much and before dinner how much so 50 here divided by 2 above and third before breakfast okay so 50, 3, 1, ja, 3, 1, then 20, 6, ja, 18, and 5, 20, 16.6 here. So 16.6 uh, multiplied by 2, its uh, answer is 32 and 0.6, 30, 33.2. Yeah, nearly 33.2. My maths is not so good, but 33.2 dose. Uh, we need to give 33.2 units in 100 kg weight but uh, you have to titrate titrate and it's need a good practice but according to the book here before uh, yeah units we need to inject but before dinner before dinner again again we need to 
डिवाइड दिस डोज इन टू थ्री डिवाइडेड बाई फिफ्टी ओके नाउ फिफ्टी डिवाइडेड बाई सिक्सटीन पॉइंट सिक्स यूनिट सो सिक्सटीन पॉइंट सिक्स यूनिट बिफोर डिनर इफ दीज आर द इंटरमीडिएट एंड इंटरमीडिएट वन ऑल्सो नॉन प्रोटीएटेड हेक्ट्रॉन इंसुलिन नॉन प्रोटीएटेड हेक्ट्रॉन हेक् Hadron. Who's Hadron? Hadron is scientist name who discovered this insulin. Very easy, very very easy. I hope these are the basics you have to remember. But if when you are going to reading a book, it consumes so much time, two three hours or maybe more. Sometimes difficult to understand. But according to my concept, I hope it's very easier for you. I am taking all the. basics and informations how to use insulin how to use insulin and how to calculate the doses of intermediate rapid acting and sliding scale i told but remember one thing i don't think so you are going to get any questions about sliding scale in your examination because this scale is banned nowadays okay now we are going to come on long acting insulin long acting means working on 24 hours long acting we are going to use on bad time and patient going to sleep that time we are going to use this insulin long acting insulin like determir and glargit determir and glargit this insulin work till 24 hours 24 hours means long acting but peak came 12 hours peak 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 came at 12 hours so we are going to use this bad time This insulin also known as basal insulin. Basal insulin bolus is three times, and intermediate we can use two times. I already explained. We use generally this is ten units during bad time. I hope till here it's clear for you. And uh, about insulin, it's enough. I think so. It's enough if you remember this one. It's very much helpful. and in our next coming videos we are going to know more things about the insulin now my doctors please be ready it's our session for question and answers i am going to ask some questions okay remember a drug used for type 1 and type 2 diabetes mellitus is option a is glipizide Option B is given clomid. Option C is metformin, and option D is insulin. My question goes to Dr. Madan. Answer please. C. Yeah, insulin we can use in both condition in type one and type two. In type one, we absolutely always always using insulin. But in case of type two, we can use when HbA1c more than nine or uncontrolled diabetes or type two diabetes mellitus with complications. Or during surgery, we need to use for insulin. Yes, brilliant answer, absolutely perfect one. Okay, my next question: Which of the following is responsible for fasting hypoglycemia? Fasting hypoglycemia, which is responsible? Okay, option A is increase insulin level. Option B is decrease insulin level. This is DNB 2012 August. Option C is increase glycogen. Option D is increased glycogen in liver. My question goes to Lal Chand doctor. A. Hey. Yeah, he is right. If when a guy's insulin levels are increases, glucose goes down. What happened? Why so? Because insulin is a key, is a key, and glucose is like a lock. When keys like to open, or uh, receptors is a lock, and insulin is like a key, and when it open, lock, everybody enters. Like glucose center, glucose metabolize. So patient goes in hypoglycemia when insulin levels rises. If we inject insulin wrongly or a high doses, or I explain sliding scale, so many patient goes in hypoglycemia due to sliding scale. Nowadays, that's why these sliding scales are banned. So my dear friends, hypoglycemia most common cause is firstly iatrogenic, and what is it? It's insulin drug induced. Okay, another question. A drug of choice in a 80 year old patient presenting with hyperglycemia and ketoacidosis. Of course, insulin. This question in Karnataka 2012. Very, very easy. Okay, another question. Type one diabetes mellitus is associated with 
I'm not uh, thinking about type 1 um, diabetes and mellitus, but in my next coming videos, we are going to know type 1, type 2, DK and everything. Option A is male gender, option B is old age, option C is gestational diabetes, option D is HLA-DR3. So my question goes to Dr. MLA, answer. A. Yeah, HLA-DR3 is brilliant, is brilliant, is really a good guy and preparing very well, very, very well. Okay, another question. In 2012 and 2013, uh, need PG. Okay, for diagnosis of diabetes mellitus, fasting blood glucose level should be more than option A is 126, option B is 140, option C is 100 milligram per deciliter, yeah. and option D is 200. My question goes to Dr. Lalu. A. Yeah, he is right, 126 milligram per deciliter. Is a criteria is a criteria to diagnose a diabetes mellitus fast glucose okay i hope my lecture is clear very basic questions very very basic questions they like to ask they are not going to ask so many things but they're always always asking the general questions and very basics and i hope my videos will help you to clear this examinations these are very simple. If you give do assembly, if you give uh, PGI Chandigarh, if you are sitting in need PG or any examination, or if you are sitting in an OPD patient came in front of you, you have to remember only basics, nothing else. Nobody can ask you, but your basics must be stronger. If your basics are stronger, that means you can clear any examinations, any examination, no doubts. So my dear doctors, please, if you still not subscribe my channel please subscribe my channel and if you want to study any topic you can ask me i am going to put a video on that topic have a good day goodbye that's all goodbye